Yeah, so for our next sessions, we are going to look at the other more types of charts. And now that we have been able to cover, um, we've been able to look at the column, the stacked column, the bar, the stacked, the stacked bar, and the line. Uh, these, as I said, all up to the area and stacked area, they use the same layout. So the X axis is going to be the category, while the Y axis is going to be uh, the series. So that's what they all use, and that's what is common in all. So you can all lower your hands, please lower your hands. Uh, it was just for a record keeping purposes. So um, those that we have been able to look at, we have now been able to come up here. I will come again to the area graph uh, later on in the, in the, in the session. Uh, but also important now we want to look at the pie chart. Now the pie chart, most of you have used it. Uh, and particularly pie chart is one of the easy and quick chart to make. Um, it, it's usually very good when you are displaying data um, in, in percentages. So you have percentage uh, coverage, percentage reporting, percentage what, uh, and you are comparing also, it's also a, a type of chart that allows us to be able to compare. Uh, and to look at this, um, I will take it with, um, with um, a malaria use case. So I'm going to just uh, complete and make this new. So um, the, the team wanted to compare uh, the different age groups in terms of the positivity of malaria cases uh, using RBT testing. So this is the type of testing. They have gone out to do the testing and all they have is they want to look at, you know, uh, what is the percentage of the positive cases in the different age groups um, in terms of testing. So it is a number. And I said, it's always good with the, with the percentage. But what the what the what the, um, the, 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 the the DHIS2 is going to do for you, it will again still present it as a number and also the percentage. So to do this, we we'll start by selecting the chart type as by chart. That's in step number one. Again, this you can even select it afterwards, but it's always good to start um, with an end in mind. What do I want to end up with? I only want to end up with a, a, with a pie chart. And that pie chart is, um, is of data, uh, which is malaria cases positive in RBG. So again, I can be able to search here malaria cases positive in RBG testing. And I said this is in, in, in the raw data, it's the data element. And again, I can be able to filter down, to be able to make sure that I'm dealing with the data element. So this is the one I'm looking about for, so I double click add. So I can be able to find, I have selected that. And uh, for the period, we want to look at the uh, last 12 months. So I wrote the period, I know last year, I the last 12 months. Oh, I updated, sorry, I did hide it. Then um, uh, in terms of, uh, Organization unit, we want to look at the whole of the training land. That's okay. So I want to chart for the whole training land. But uh, particularly here, I want to see the different age groups. So there is what we call age malaria. So I'll be able to add this age malaria to be able to see the different, the, how, they, how they, this uh, uh, pie chart is going to be sliced by the different age groups. So I come here, I click on malaria. And then I will put in all the different age groups that I need. I want to see the percentage within the so 4, 5, 14, and 14, and 15 and above. So I will add this to the series. And this is basically what I'm able to present. So I, I am able to present to the team that you know, in this, we almost have um, 39, 35, 25. So the highest number of malaria positive cases using LDT, I want the that the 15 years plus, the 15 years and, and, and plus, that's where we have the, the highest number. Okay. So I could also change this um, and, and, and say 
maybe we want to see where when were the like the highest um uh, positive cases in terms of last year which which month had the highest so this is where again i will pull now you see we didn't change the layout when i'm dealing with five charts i'm only dealing with the filter and the series which is the categorization the the, the, the data the data display uh, for the series so i don't have the category here to realize that so um, I'm only dealing with two, di two, two layouts. So I move, I can move this one here and I put the period to be the one that shows me the, the different uh, areas. So I want to see which, um, which period has the highest, uh, the highest. Now regardless of the age group, but I want to show which period has the highest uh, uh, my positive cases. So when I update this, you will see that it's now giving me all the years. Is the hand being raised as a question or? Okay, no, I so think those are hands from before. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so you see with now the pie chart, you are able to be now play around with the series in terms of what you want to do. Now, for example, this is showing us the different months. Now, like which month has had the highest malaria case? So I can be able to see. Maybe now here you're using eyes. You remember, if it was the, the bar graph, we would be able to sort. But here, I have to use my eyes to see which, which pi is high, which uh, pi is higher. And I think here, this is the May is where we had a lot of cases which were positive, which is um, also showing that, you know, last year we had high cases, what, during May. And maybe you may also want to use this to compare the, the regions. So I can be able to pull this back and then I put this put in what region and this this organization into the cell. But when I update, it gives me a whole plan because I'm only dealing with what with one with one one of uh, units. So I may come down here and I want to say let me see this against that. And you can see it's in the animal region where you had the malaria, the positive cases, uh, the positive cases in, uh, in using LRDG were higher in the animal region. No wonder the animals spread mosquitoes, so that's why it was, uh, it was high. Okay, so that's the, the beauty about the pie chart. Very easy, only dealing with two dimensions, you can be able to move them around and keep you know, changing according to what you want. So that was with, to do with the, the pie chart. Okay, so the next uh, um, um, the next chart type that we are going to look at is the radar, uh, which is a spider in, in most in most of the other packages. It's a spider kind of data presentation, uh, and with this again, we are going to look at it using the malaria cases, and um, we want to see by age. So I will bring this back. And I look at my malaria cases and then I will just update. So this is what it has been showing me, but we want to use this to be able to show, uh, show this on the spider or the, the radar um, uh, type of chart. So I just come here and I can go choose that from here and then I update. So the, again, this is, uh, the, it's now bringing in the category uh, point of view which is now because it's now creating the kind of X, X axis in here. So that's why now the category has come in and we need to see what to put in the category. For this, we want to see the malaria cases by age on the different, um, um, for the different period. And let's remember it was the last 12 months. So when I update, this is how it looks like. So you are able to see by the different age groups how this is, uh, you know, um, uh, working around uh, in terms of uh, the malaria cases for the different months. The highest being in May, I think we have seen that for everything. And then you can also see where the data is uh, spread. There are of course some months which have no data, they will remain blank. Uh, remember this is using the relative period. So we don't have data for February, we don't have data for January for this uh, particular Okay. So this is how you'll be able to show the, 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 the radar 
this is the um, the case chart type again on this same material case. So um, still, if you wanted to do it from afresh, not starting from what I, I, I had it before, let's quickly be able to do that. Um, you will be able to choose from data from the chart type. You have that. That's the chart type that you want from the data. We did say we want malaria. Malaria. Is malaria. Cases. And it's a data element. Which is a. RBT, this is the one here. positive cases, RBT. So if I did a type or update, it's type. We choose the period, we say the period was last 12 months. You have to get your height or not to say to it, your height after three And the organization unit, we want it to now look at for the whole for the whole um, uh, training run or for the whole country, which is selected here. And uh, the, the height. Now you have selected everything, then you update. And when you update, you will be able to see you are like a uh, type of chart. I'm showing you the highest, the more that goes to the end will be the highest, and then the inner one will be from zero to the highest of, of that. So basically, that is how um, this works. And again, if you want to be able to disaggregate and see by the different age groups of malaria, you come and add here. And then you add all of them. You add them to the series because the series is where that is presented, and you update it. And then you will be able to see that. So that's being able to create it from, from uh, a blank slate. Okay, so that was quickly looking at a pie chart. And uh, I think now you can be able to see where you want to be able to use your pie charts, and they, they give a good, nice visual of the performance. The radar, you will see it also gives a good, nice of performance. Basically, you need to have a mixture of you know visuals from your dashboard so that people don't get bored by the same charts, tables, tables, you know. And if you're not doing tables, you're doing bar graphs, column graphs. So you need to, to mix and spice up your dashboard. So you will see that on the dashboard, you can put all these types of charts, and um, you can and the, the dashboard really looks uh, attractive. So the next one we are going to look at is the gauge, uh, which is the speedometer. Uh, for most of you that have uh, that have used uh, other analytic tools, we are actually trying to bring all these different types of charts that we see out there into the DHIS tool. So the the gauge is a um, is a very easy and nice tool to use uh, when you are going to show performance. I mean, like we. It's always good when you're looking at your speedometer and you want to see whether you are hitting the hundred and so on. So the goal is also something that is, is going to be able to help you monitor your performance. This could be reporting rates, this could be you know, coverage, this could be uh, proportions, this could be ratios. So um, that, 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 that nice display can be able to, to, give, to, to give you that. And particularly for this, um, I'm going to use an example of where the, the immunization program, the EPI or EPO or um, EPI program, want to keep a check of OPV coverage. Even for, for the, the HIV team, you could also want to say, I want to keep a check on my dashboard. I want this speedometer to show me how far I've gone in terms of, you know, positivity case or reporting or, um, or uh, test and treat uh, those kinds of indicators. So for this particular one, I'm going to use an example of an EPI uh, indicator that looks at the uh, OPV coverage. So this is the number of children that have been able to receive uh, OPV, that were able to receive uh, OPV. Uh, probably you are in a campaign and you want to keep checking on your, on your board to see how, how far and how good uh, uh, the coverage is going. And you can even have them compare national comparison compared to the district, to the, to some districts, and you see how, how it's showing. So let me, let me create, start afresh. So again, I'll say I need a chart, which is a page. Uh, 
which is here, compares percentage indicators at 100 scale, that's the best for 100 scale. So you select it. So I've selected it, and I need now to select the data to be able to present. Next step is what data am I going to be able to share in my day? Uh, so I'll click on the data. And then I am going to look for OPV cover, OPV3 coverage. So it is OPV3 coverage. So that's an indicator, it's a percentage. Again, we say this type of chart is really good for um, percentages or ratios or you know, uh, thousand or then I add it in here. Then I can help it uh, to be able to select the other options. So this particular team is monitoring for last year. It could also, it could also, could also be for this year because you want to be able to see this grow every day. And actually, I think this is this type of chart is very good for the current for, for the current uh, period. Like you say, you want to monitor this month, or you want to monitor this year, and you see how the performance is going. Otherwise, if it's last year, it's probably not going to change because that was static there. It's always good to use this uh, gold gauge uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the current period. So that as data comes in and it's you know, improving, you are able to see um, uh, the progress. Uh, but for this particular exercise, since we don't have data for this year, let me use last year. But again, I've, I've emphasized that it's always good to use it for an ongoing activity to be able to monitor that. So I'll come and click here, select last year, which is already selected. Otherwise, it will be this year, which will be the use of the select. So I hide. Then, um, and again, this is a chart type that only deals with series and filter. You either filtering or you are just you are just displaying data into the series, so you will not have the category. And then I update. Again, what has been really improved here is um, uh, depending on the chart type that you have, you will see that this is now coming and it's really really working working very well as opposed to the previous versions. The previous versions you still had all the layout dimensions and it was very hard to tell. Okay. When do I use this? When 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 must I use this? And when am I not my to use this? So in this new version, uh, we are using um, uh, the, the, there has been an, an effort only limit to what you are, what is applicable in here, and you also be able to see it in options. There are some of the things that which are going to appear as opposed to the way they were appearing before. So with this, I can be able to see at uh, last year. Uh, my OPV coverage is stopped at 72 percent. But again, I said if it was like you know tomorrow you will come and see okay, did we immunize, immunize more children? Then the the, the 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 speedometer will still keep what keep on moving. And again, we can also be able to add um, a legend to this. We can add a legend um, on this by going to options and say we are tired of seeing this blue all the time, so we want to see. But if it's a red, it's probably before, before 70, if it's blue, then and, and all that. So we can come here and say, say oh, go to um, legend options, legend, and then you can add on the legend. And this legend I'm going to add here. Of course, it's, I want it to be the background color, not the text color. The text color will just be, be on 72. And then I want to use uh, select, not predefined. And then I want to use uh, EPA coverage as a region. And then I want to show the region to uh, key, which I will update and then click OK. So you will see we are in the yellow, orange, sorry, uh, because we are now in 70, between 70 and 100. When it hits say, 80 and, 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 and 80 to the next level, it will show you uh, light green and it will show the whole of it light green. And then when it comes to 90, uh, it was, or if it goes above 100, then we shall have it as orange. So basically, that is the, the way the game works. Very simple and very easy to, uh, to use. Okay, good. Um, Okay, good. So, um, yeah, those are the two charts that I've been able to quickly show you. 
in terms of uh, um, our, our, our session today. So the next um, chart type we are going to look at is what is called a single value. This has become very popular in many other charts outside DHIS2, where you just want to have a single value. Say, I want to have my population uh, figure displayed in, uh, in, in my chart, uh, in, in my dashboard. So I just want one single value. We, we've seen this really work very well in the COVID, like you want to see the number suspected, number tested as single value because the table sometimes confuses and the people can't see it very well. Sometimes they may not want to um, compare. So I want each as a single value. So we have this chart that has been introduced, I think after 36, um, 2.36. And um, it's called a single value. So again, I will um, um, make new here. And I go and I pick that single value. It's just here, you click on a single value. Again, as a single value, it takes one value. So it will only take only one value. So for this, um, I would say probably I want to just push a percentage, uh, OPV percentage, let's say OPV3, like the way we have been doing it. So I come to that time and I will choose O, o, B, o P V three uh, coverage. So that's what I want I want as a single value. I hide it. And again, you'll see again this one is also dealing with only the, the filter, the series and the filter. So we don't have the category option here. And again, I will just say update here. Because I wanted it for last year, this is last year, so it was last year, yes. I, and then I update. So I'll get my single value here. You can be able to see, and again, this is also still new that we can be able to put the percentage. If it was an indicator, we put a percentage on it. And it comes with the, with the percentage, uh, 72%. So my OPV coverage last year was 72. And this looks very smart on your dashboard. As we shall see, this is some of the exercises that we require you to do. Can you design the chart that gives you total number of HIV cases? Can you do that? Total number of people enrolled in school, like that, learners in school, and all that. Uh, malaria cases, prince cards, money spent, all that. So, single values are going to be very good uh, when you upgrade your system to this level. You can also add a, a, a region. Again, I can say to say predefined. Uh, select the region and it's OPV coverage for the region also. And then you can also have it like this. So that would be how nice this would be looking. Like the numbers would change from red to green to up to dark green. So that is the single value uh, chart type. Okay. Good. So um Okay, I've added a single value in there. Okay, the next one we are going to look at the chart we're going to look at is what we call a cumulative uh, chart, a cumulative uh, kind of line graph in chart. Um, in most cases, um, you you will be asked to present a chart that shows me progressively the total numbers. So what was January? Uh, if we had one client last last January, in February we added a second one. So January should show two so as a cumulative kind of um, a chart. So this is also a very good presentation um, in terms of monitoring your progress. Of course, cumulative numbers should always go upwards. If they go downwards, then we have a problem. Uh, that's that's that, that that may not even actually happen. So we're going to look at one other chart that is called cumulative, and this is mostly going to be easily presented by either a, a, a column chart or a line graph. And in this, to be able to demonstrate this, I am going to look at people who are newly initiated on ART. So then I remember every month we are doing testing and getting positive ones, and we're starting them on education. So you want to have this nice chart that really shows you the cumulative numbers, not necessarily what was done each month, just want the cumulative curve that shows you your upward trend as every month we go. So the difference between the last month and this month 
is what has been implemented. Okay, so um, I will refresh this and just start with new. So again, um, I will use a line graph for to demonstrate this, and I will just be able to look for data around people living with HIV new on ART. So I'll just come here and I'll come and say new on ART. That will also give me the numbers. So it's people living with HIV new on ART, not the percent, not the indicator, the percentage. So I'll just, um, I can hide that. Then I'll go to the period. I look for the last 12 months. So I move and I want to see the, 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 the cumulative numbers for the last 12 months. So last 12 months, I hide that. And again, I want it for my whole training land or for a different region, for a district, for a given group of facilities. But for this, let's use our, and then I will update. So what this is giving me, it is giving me numbers uh, in each, right? Each each month, these are the numbers that we are started on one. But we want to be able to see a progress because this is um, what this is giving you. Every month, this month we had this number new on LV, this one, this one, this one. So that has been our trend. We've been having more numbers, more numbers. But we want to see this uh, cumulative, how the numbers have been cumulated. So to help us do that, uh, we go to options and other options. Under data, we have what we call cumulative values. So you just click on that and then you click on update. And basically, you will see that it has this is how the numbers have been going up. So um, we started the uh, first March with the 5,700, but as of December, we have now 61,000. So our program has really been growing. Now you see where it has become flat, it means that this month we do not have any numbers. So it can become flat. I don't think it will be able to drop down. It will just become flat at that level because there is no what? There is no data on that. And you can also be able to add more dimensions. Like for example, I want to see of these, how many are male, how many are female. So you can be able to add in um, a gender or sex uh, dimension, uh, which I can be able to pull from here. Like I just say, um, Let's have sex added here, which is male and female, and then I add them to the series. And so what you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see the cumulative numbers per day, per, per sex. So the male, so obviously we are looking at have more females in our program and uh, than male, than the males, but also the, the, the cumulative numbers uh, per each. Good, so that is, um, that is uh, in terms of dealing with cumulative um, uh, numbers uh, or cumulative curve or cumulative line graph uh, to be able to show you your progress and they be able to you know be able to monitor that you know from between this period and this period this was our percentage increment increase uh, this is you can see the steepness for the gradient um, it also gives the, the level of the increment in those numbers. Okay, now let's go to monitoring um, over different years. So we have a chart what we call year over year uh, uh, performance or monitoring. So for example, um, let's use a case of malaria as an example. You want to see the trends of malaria cases for the different years. But you want to be able to see the lines for each year. Line one, this is 2019 over the different months within that year. Because what this helps you is, and I think for disease surveillance, for some of you are involved in disease surveillance, it helps you to be able to identify some kind of trend or some kind of seasonality of a disease. Like for example, if it's uh, during the dry season or the wet season or the summer or winter, you want to see what happens, like you want to see in May, or in December, what happens in December in terms of our, you know, our program for the different years? We've been operating for five years, but what has been our train? What has been the data you know, collection? What has been the numbers? What has been our coverage in terms of particular months? Maybe it's a holiday month, or maybe it's a, a migration month, or maybe it's a, a school month and all that. So 
we, we, we use what we call year over year charts to be able to demonstrate this kind of, uh, this kind of, of, of analysis. And, and, and this is also still new to DHIS, this is also new to DHIS too. Uh, I don't know how before we were able to do it, uh, to be able to look at multiple years and look at their different months. Um, and, and a good example um, is where we're looking at seasonality or some kind of events that happen every year. Uh, we have some bookies, you know, some traditional ceremonies that happen during years. Um, uh, for example, people in the uh, safe male circumcision, they probably take it some season and they want to see whether, whether, whether our train has been the same over the years. And, and to do this, I am going to use um, uh, BCG coverage. I would have used another indicator, but let me use BCG coverage. Uh, but again, feel free to use it for all the other indicators that you want to monitor year by year. So they give it the different months, but the whole, the, the whole concept is the same, okay? I hope we are all together on that in terms of how the year over year. Okay, um, uh, so like we're trying to, um, to be able to see um, um, school performance in given months of the year, whatever you want to do and then compare so many years at once. So I'm going to be able to clear this and, uh, and I start over. And again, the chart type I'm trying to use here is what we call year over year column. You can even do it in the line graph, but uh, let's say year over year. No, it is year, year over year uh, line graph. You can even use the, uh, the charts, but let's use the, the year over year uh, line graph. So you, you select it. And um, again, you see what has changed already. Things are beginning to change here when I select the type of chart. We're still dealing with series, category, and filter, but you see some of the selections have changed the way we do the selections. Uh, don't get worried, we're going to get there. Uh, we want the data. Data we want is BCG coverage. I want the BCG coverage. And I want to see our BCG coverage over different so many years. Uh, so I select that and I can hide or I can update, but I don't want to update because it's going to confuse you before you see exactly what you want until we select all the, the parameters we need. Uh, and remember, we can still move them around. Then I will go to the, um, to the organization unit. Let me still leave it for the whole uh, training run for the whole country. And I updated. Now what I'm seeing is, um, is uh, um, this year and last year. That's what has been selected. But because we don't have this year, we don't have data, this is 2021, that's why you will not see any grid line here. But let me just remove this and then select the, the periods that I want. I want to be able to look at my data. Uh, I want to compare 2021 by month, 2020, 2019, and 2018 then I can be able to update. So basically you can be able to see that, you know, so here you analyze, you know, by, by month in that year and you see the trend for each. So you can see that you, you were all low in, uh, in 2019 and so on and all that and, and, and not moving around. So this is showing you year over year uh, uh, analysis. It would be good because this data is made up, it would have been good to see some spikes and you see if the spike is uniform. And if you are careful, I mean, because this is made up data, you will see that the trend is almost the same. Year over year, the trend is almost the same. The improvement is almost the same. But uh, it would have been good to really see some of these big spikes um, uh, over the different years. Let me reduce the years and just put maybe only 18, so I can be able to remove 21. Leave those three and update. So you just you, you can be able to look at those three. So um, again, this is really really some, something interesting in terms of being able to look at uh, uh, this kind of uh, analysis. And again, I've said very key for disease surveillance. 
for monitoring programs, you know, like in which year were we really at our highest, in which year were we doing badly, you know, like you would see it. So, but because this data is really made up, it does not really pull it out very well. Okay. Otherwise, uh, the other way you would do it, you would be able to put everything, all the years from the time, from the beginning, all the years, all this way up to down. Okay, so let's um, um, be able to uh, change this a little bit and see um, what if I want to just change this back to maybe monthly. I just want to see maybe quarterly. Uh, this has been my yearly. Maybe I want to see it in quarterly. You can change this. Now you see the period that we have now brought in is um, months per year, by months per year, by months per year, quarters per year. So these are now at the dimensions that have come in because I have used the chart of year over year. So you will see that um, again, this is changing depending on the chart that we have using. You have not seen this before. Like say I can put this on quarterly, quarter per year, quarters per year, which is like that. And then you will update, it is now going to put your data into quarters. So it puts first quarter year, quarter, quarter, and the quarter like that. Okay. So um, let's say we're going to add on maybe a measles campaign. I'm going to take it back to months. Let's have it months. And then we probably want to add now two data elements. Let's see how the data elements can compare in here. So let's put month by year. Months by year. Okay, we have a chart. But say we want now to add in a, a new data element, which is going to add here or just click there and click it. And this new data element is going to be called um, ML. MR1, measles, rubella one, uh, coverage. So we're going to add in a data element called uh, measles, rubella coverage. I add it there. Yeah. Okay, oops, it's saying that this cannot be compared. So we need to adjust our, our, our period. I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, we're going to, uh, we need to adjust our period so that we can be able to change this. Uh, into, no, it, uh, sorry, the year over year can only compare one. Sorry, I, I, I think I was, I was moving faster. The year over year can only compare one element at a time. So basically, this is now um, what we can be able to do with our, our chart. Uh, very good. So uh, next is um, we're going to um, look at the chart uh, where we are now going to be mixing up the categories. Um, we're going to be um, having uh, different uh, uh, axes being introduced in here. And, and, and an example is where we want to be able to compare um some dimensions some uh, our dimensions say you do an upper compared with the different months and then for the different data elements and an example i'm going to give you i'm going to open up a chart that has been saved for us and this chart is a uh, is a institutional institutional deliveries in the last 12 months so this is a kind of chart, I don't know most how many of you have been able to develop such a chart. Uh, and here what we are trying to display is two category charts. This is a two category chart. It's, it's a normal uh, quorum chart, but you're trying to bring in two categories. Uh, the category of, uh, of uh, for this case is uh, rural and urban. Uh, and also the category of uh, um, uh, the, the different um, uh, months for this case. 
So we want to be able to create such a chart. Uh, as you can see, we have, uh, you know, we have the months here, and each month we are want to compare the peri urban and rural. For each month, we want to compare the peri urban and rural, and, and, and so on and so on. So for each month, we want to compare two data elements. So this is also a new type of chart, uh, very key to analyze different categorization. Here you can have the male and female for each month, and you are, you are doing some comparison. So how this is being created, um, um, we will be able to uh, select the, our, data, our, our chart type, which is coral, as you can see there. And then we will be able to select our period, which is the last 12 months. And then we add in there. So we can be able to subcategorize. So it's basically subcategorizing this. So let me just do it so quickly so I can just uh, so I come here, it's a form chart, it's not any special chart. And when it comes to data, we want to look at uh, uh, this is institutional delivery by local institutional delivery by locality. So it's institutional delivery rate. You want to see the, the delivery is in Europe and the delivery is against urban, so you can hide. Then we put the period, which is the last 12 months. Okay. Then you can hide. The organization unit is the whole of training land. But uh, when we do update, so we want the data into the down category here, and then we want the, the, this one up in the service and we update. So you see what it has now given us is the no, the period is up there, the data is down. And the data is up. So this is what it has given us, but we want to bring in a dimension into the set, into the, uh, the category of the location. So we have rural but part of urban. So we add all this, and then we add this into the category. And then, um, then again, we are able to have a dimension into the category. And then we are able to see our data up there. Now the data is up here. Then the period is down here. And the, the period is subcategorized by that. And then we have the So um, we have our data in the series, which we are showing here. In our category, we have the months. But now, if I move this one up before, you will see the difference. You see the difference how it happens. So it will be able to disaggregate the rule. First, disagree by euro and then give me all the months. If I push this one up there, uh, it will be able to first disaggregate by first give me all the months and then subrogate by the category. Just as simple as that. That is also some type of chart that helps in analysis from period to period, looking at the different dimensions. Are we together? Good. So um if I change this one to up, you see how it changes. It will be able to give me the, 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 the disaggregation up here. I'm looking at the rural category, and I can see the trend over time. And when I look at the rural, I can see the trend over time. So for those who are delivered in, from the rural clinics, it's the trend, this is the trend. But well, the trend is not really showing very well. You can read the line graph. You can also just add a line graph here. Maybe just make it line graph, as simple as that. So it also show you a trend within each category, how the different the, the period can be changed to what you want, uh, and so on and so on. Okay, so that was the the categorization of the uh, being able to uh, categorize the um, the categories. So next, um, you can make also this one a, 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 an area chart. Come here and make it an area chart. You just see that can be an area chart. So probably you want an area chart within the different categories. You can be able to get it like that. Um, the next and almost the second last chart we are going to be looking at out here for the day um, is going to be um, uh, a new also entry into the charts. Uh, and this is going to be looking at who having two axes. So you remember in Excel, you can have one, one y-axis here, 
and another y axis here, and it presents the same data together. And this happens uh, mostly when you are presenting um, um, aggregate, uh, aggregate data uh, together with indicators. So you'll be able to see that the, in, the, the numbers are shooting up and leaving the aggregate data below. So um, the DHIS2 also has improvised for us to be able to have data presented into more than one uh, axis, uh, the, the Y axis. So we are going now to be able to look at this. And to do this, I am going to use again an example from um, immunization. Again, these examples, you can use them, it could be the number of HIV positive cases and the percentage of new cases um, initiated on ART. That could be one. You could go to malaria, uh, number of malaria cases and presented together on the same chart with percentage of positivity rate. All that can now be possible into one chart. I, I, I remember most of you have been downloading data, taking it to Excel and to be able to achieve that kind of chart. But let's see how we can be able to achieve this. So I'm going to again flash this. Uh, members, you can save as you want, but yeah, just for the purposes of the demo, I am always uh, making, uh, clearing them as I, as I move. So we're going to have a chart where we want to show two um, Y axis. And, and so for this one, let me use um, an example of uh, the BCG doses given. So that means you are counting the number of children who have received the doses, the doses uh, together with the percentage of uh, um, the BCG coverage. And I'm going to use a bar graph and uh, probably that one I can make it a line graph. You can just be able to, to mix them and we shall see. So, um, so for start, let me choose a column graph for that. And then uh, the data I'm going to choose, I said I'm going to choose two, two indicators or two items, data items. One is an indicator, which must not go 100%. The other one is numbers, which can even go to 1 million and plus. But when I put them in one bar side by side, I will see the numbers up and the the indicator very down, and it's very difficult for us to visualize well. So let me see, I'm going to do BC, uh, BCG doses, doses given, which is this one here, uh, together with BCG coverage, which is this one here. And again, I'm hiding, because I'm still selecting what I want to, to show. And then I want to look at it for the last 12 months. So I want to compare these two for the last 12 months. I get my opinion. Remove this and then for the last 12 months. And then, then I want to first of all see for my whole country, for the whole country, which is the failing land, which is selected here. Now I can update. So you see what I was telling you is it's very difficult for you to be able to. to I mean, this would be really a um, non MRD chart presented where the numbers are up there. Then the, the, for somebody to be able to see the percentage is properly, you may probably have to turn off this, then turn off that, and turn off this. So um, basically, this is not what you want to, 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 to present. This would really look a bad chart. So for us to be able to do this, we are going to modify this so that we can present the, the, the coverage on this one, so that this we can be able to see the line come out straight, and this is what we have been able to achieve with other packages. So let's see how to do this. We will go to op options, and we go to series. So under series, you will see that now I have my two data items. One is the BCT coverage, so I can say to put this piece on access one, access one. And then for this one, I put it on access to. And I can decide whether I'm going to use a bar chart or for the other one, I can use a line graph. Those are the two options allow that we have for this, uh, for this. So if I had a third indicator, it would also be able to show that. And uh, let's for now deal with two. So again, remember, I am trying to be able to introduce another axis to be able to make my video look very attractive and be able to have some meaningful presentation. 
Uh, so that we can be able to see the percentages very well and also the, the aggregate numbers. So to do that, you go to options and go to sales, and then you'll be created with two data items or three that you have. And then um, by default, this is what it is. All of them are bar graphs, but you want one of them to be a line graph. And this one you want to be able to get access one. Well, we have up to four. So you can have four data items here, and then you update. And when you update, you will just be able to see that, you know, uh, this upper one is presenting percentages. And again, this is not really good. We should have been able to, uh, we can increase this, uh, the scale here so that it can be able to uh, push more. Uh, and then also uh, uh, increase the, the maybe, this one has to be in 100, but you can be able to increase this scale. Um, probably if you go to, if you go to options, remember you have your access, you can be able to go to, the access one and then be able to uh, maybe the maximum uh, will be up to uh, 20. Let's see if that works. Okay, so something like that, so that you can be able to be able to differentiate them there. So you can be able to increase your, your maximum here and then you are able to see this. So I pushed it really, really far. I can pull it back a little bit down if I want to access. And then I think this one maybe remove uh, it. Yeah, so so that I can be able to see this, I think I've made it so short and uh, probably it around uh, uh, 150. Great. Yeah, so you can play around with this and, and see that you like at least you are able to uh, to have a very smart uh, layout at the moment. Uh, one layout, a good layout of this. So that is uh, basically what we can be able to do. So let's keep changing your scale. Whatever, you know, you can keep playing around and see. So this is now the one access and the other access, and you can even be able to label them. So in this case, we are we are going to label them on our first axis, which is the y, the first Y. Yeah, we are making it, um, we're going to say it's the, BC, the BCG dose given, that's the one which is showing on this other side. So you come here and make it custom, and this is BCG doses given, given, okay, okay. And again, you can just position it, let it get the start, you can change the color. Okay, and then the access to that is going to also be changed. You can just uh, for that one is BCG coverage. Sorry, coverage. Uh, that's you can also be changed the color, maybe it's blue, and then you can put also at the beginning and then the update. Oh. So these are. These are my two, uh, two, two what? Two labels. Uh, that. Okay, so that was uh, dealing with two um, um, axes. And uh, you can easily now see that my chart is really displaying my, my percentage very well and uh, also showing the numbers very well. Again, this is data which is made up. I wish it was having different spikes that it would be come out very well. So this is a, also one of the new ways to be able to read your data into two axes. And, um, and again, you can, play around, you can play around with the, even adding the dimension. For example, if you are rural and urban, can we have a question? So if I want to add in my rural and urban, that categorization can also come in here. I can add it to the category, sorry. Yeah, do not. Rural and urban, then add it to, add it gone. Um, rural and urban, leave it here. And then my data is up there. So you can still have your, your, you know, your other categorization. So if you want to look at for each month by different categories, or you want to just turn it around like that, 
So these are all new ways of being able to, you know, to look at your data. So this looks really also quite cool. You have even different uh, dimensions being observed by different parts and, and all that. Okay. And the last chart we are going to look at is the scatter plot. The last chart we are going to look at is the scatter plot, uh, which again I'm also going to uh, start from afresh given the time uh, and see how we can be able to use this. So, this scatter plot for some of you uh, probably have, uh, let me start by opening uh, an already existing and then we can be able to see how to create it. So I'm going to open um, a, a chart which is a uh, ANC force bit first visit first visit compared with ANC force bit this uh, outlier. So here we are trying to look at do some outlier analysis and uh, uh, outlier analysis, trying to see which facilities are off. I mean, uh, are off the the, the radar. In terms of uh, data collection and so on. So, in terms of the two data elements we are looking at, we want to compare the ANC first list compared to the ANC fourth list uh, using the scatter plot. And this is really going to use the outliers. We'll be able to uh, apply either in the quartile range, uh, Z scores, or modified Z scores into this. So, this is also a new entry into DHIS2, uh, mostly for those who have been working with the uh, immunization programs. Uh, this was one of the apps that we had originally that was um, separate. And so this has been brought into the core for us to be able to have at least the scatter plot. This, of course, um, goes a long way to um, just presenting the data, but more about analysis and being able to know which, any, which, which uh, charts you are able to compare. And again, you will see that uh, because of the scatter plot, it has just changed the dimensions, a whole completely changed. We have things like vertical and horizontal being introduced in, 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 in here. Um, and so um, um, it really takes uh, an understanding of outlier analysis, knowledge background, for you to be able to analyze, other than just coming and saying, okay, these are outliers, that being a dispenser is an outlier, and all this, all the ones that are in red are all outliers, and then the ones in green are. Uh, you know that, and you need to go back and check that because it's, it's not aligned to what the data. So, um, just to quickly be able to reproduce this, um, it's also as simple as being able to select the dimension. But again, an understanding of our analysis is very key, and then uh, because of time, I'm not going to be able to go through all that, but I'm just going to be able to show you how we can be able to create this our analysis. Basically, it is used for indicators that are already related. Or data elements are related. For example, here we are looking at the first list and say and first end list. They have some kind of relationship, and you are also aiming to make sure that you know whatever you have in one data should be matching the other indicator. So for that particular uh, case, I am going uh, I'm going to flash this and then start all over creating this uh, scatter plot. So the first step is to select the type of chart, which is the scatter uh, chart. And uh, when I said it already, you can see that um, it has already changed the, the, our layout dimension to vertical and horizontal. And uh, I will now start looking at the data that I want to be able to put into this scatter plot. <coughs> so you can choose what to put in the data by clicking on the data. And now you will just be able to see that even our way we select the data has changed. We have the vertical. And the horizontal, and in the vertical, uh, let's put our NC first list. NC one, which is uh, this first one here, and then um, we have selected that. Then we go to the horizontal. We put NC first list, which is uh, NC four and plus list the element. And then we can hide or update, but I want to get confused. We go to the home units. Um, because this is going to be analyzed at source, the home, the period, the period we can use last year. Let's keep it last year. The period, let's keep it last year. Okay. 
But because this is going to be analyzed at the facility level, we want this, uh, this um, an outlier analysis is, is deals with the source of the data, where the data was entered. So we are going to be able to put this at the facility level. So I come to the organization unit and I will choose, I will not go in and click on each of the facilities, but I'll just come and select try training run and I say give me all the facilities. And then I update. So um, you will be able to see that now my scatter uh, um, chart is coming in and I can be able to see this. But for me to be able to do the outlier and the, the period of last year, we be able to get this. We need to be able to go to the options of outliers and specify uh, some of the other extra uh, selections. So when I got options, again, the options, this is new. You are just seeing this coming in because we are in the chart of outliers. So we we'll just have to click here and then you just uh, uh, select outlier analysis. Just click on outlier analysis. You want to use outlier analysis. And again, you just use the detection mode. So what do you want to use? Do you want to use in the quarterly rate? Again, this is the knowledge from our prior analysis. It's not the DHIS. We are trying to be able to display this. So uh, let's not get into uh, what is Z score, what is the five day score, when we use this and all that. So for example, for this one, let's use in the quarterly range. And then um, the threshold factor set at 1.5. And then we want to be able to look at the extreme lines. We want also to be able to show the extreme lines uh, in this. And then um, lastly, we want the one percentage extreme detection. Uh, you can also increase the percentage here when you update. Again, this is the information that will give you when they are setting their outline analysis uh, for the project. Charts. Then you update. And when you update, you will be able to see your chart and you can be able to see. Uh, the outliers have come in red, so wherever there is a, there is, um, there is a, a, a red, you point to it and to give you the facility name. Otherwise, the rest are all in here, and you can be able to see that uh, we've been able to uh, draw um, uh, uh, plot for us, our scatter plot that shows uh, our trial analysis for ANC and uh, first risk and first risk. And, um, and again, you can be able to zoom out. You can Sorry, I lost my connection. Let me share again. Okay, so I was going to just be able to zoom out. Uh, yeah, when you click on any, you can be able to zoom out. When you click it's very to highlight, but you should be able to uh, highlight at least. So when you do the highlight here, it allows you to be able to zoom and, and do your analysis in this facility. So that you can be able to see even the near best by facility. So the zoom, this allows you to be able to zoom in uh, to the facilities to, to the level that if you want to take it back, update. So this is just for the purposes of zoom. You just um, click and drag, click and drag to zoom out. So you click and drag to just to zoom out. So basically, this is um, uh, um, the end of our charts. There have been quite, quite many, and I think we've been able to look at all the charts. We've been able to look at the column graph, the, the bar charts. We've been able to look at area charts, start, pie chart, code, weather, year over, single values, scatter plots. So uh, basically, you have all everything that you um, is in the DHIS2 latest version uh, being introduced to you and, uh, and highlighted. So um, I will take this time to really stop here and um, maybe allow for a few questions since we are almost on time. But I do encourage you, uh, I do encourage you to go over and, and be able to uh, go via using the user manual 
the, the guide that is uh, uploaded into Muno and then go step by step. Today I'll give it over the weekend so that at least you are able to go through the chat. But most importantly, I would encourage you to try this with your own instance if you are using the same project. Uh, because there's a training here, but there's also translating this to, um, to what has been uh, installed in your, in your system. So we can stop here and then we will take questions. And I think we, uh, we have a few minutes, about seven minutes for a few questions and then see. So the word of the day, Uh, Daisy, you can share the word of the day. Okay, uh, the word of the day is uh, Chigali. The word of the day is Chigali. I'm going to put it in the chat as well.